I got to know right away, why Untitled Mark? I never signed any of my stuff in art school. Okay. It's, it's just kind of stuck. Yeah? I, everything was just untitled, and I never signed anything. Like, Mark, how are you going to know if this is yours or not? And I was like, huh, I guess that's a good point. Yeah. So was that just kind of like a passive thing? Like, you just, just did yeah. it, or just, did you have like a... No, I just did it. Just yeah. like boom, and then everyone's like, "Oh, that's a really cool name. That's a double entendre." Da 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 da. Your name's Mark. Oh, how cool! Oh yeah, so, it's an untitled Mark. Uh -huh. Oh, got it. So you know, it's kind of like I like to look at it as the more I, after I thought about it, because then I had to come up with an explanation why I named myself Untitled Mark. I'm an artist, so I like to put my mark on everything. It doesn't matter if it's paint, pencil, metal, wood. It doesn't matter. It's just I like to do stuff, so gotcha. it's just, I'm putting my mark on everything, no matter what medium or material. What drew you to art, and when did that start? Since I was a little kid. Yeah? You know, I don't remember anything other than being an artist. My parents were always pushing me. Started with the Legos, the Rector sets, the Connects, then just went from there. Just kept, kept at it. Yeah. So you've always had a fascination towards building Absolutely. as being part of your art. I wanted to, I saw that you did some work with Rock Lidditz. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. How did you get involved with, the, with Rock Lidditz and what did you do over there? I was a scenic artist for Tate Towers. Okay. And then after I graduated from Pennsylvania College of Art and Design, and then I, they offered me like, hey, you want to make furniture? And that's how Rock Lidditz came to be. Okay. So I, it's the first time I'd ever made furniture or done anything like that. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well, that's kind of a leap. It was a big leap. I got thrown into wolves. <laughs> so. I checked out your website and I saw some of your artwork and stuff. And one thing that I noticed is you use a lot of angles. You seem to see angles differently than most people. Is mm -hmm. that something you're cognizant of? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. What yeah absolutely. I don't like anything being straight lines generally. So I, I like to have that little offset. Okay. It's just, I don't know, just for my sanity, I guess. Yeah. Now, is art like a creative release for you? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, what draws you to... It's just, it's, uh, like, everybody has their, like, their little happy place. Art's my happy place. It's like, I can go there and it's just, everything else dissolves. Okay. It's just, there is nothing wrong in the world when I'm in my little art world. Yeah. This is your happy place factory that yeah, exactly. I got. Exactly. Uh, you got all sorts of stuff in there. Yep. <laughs> I do. You've called art your saving grace. Mm -hmm. What does that mean and how? Well, actually, it's almost 10 years ago now, actually over 10 years ago now, as of the 28th of October, would be my 10 years clean and sober. Okay. So I was, you know, I just went through a lot of really traumatic stuff when I was younger and in high school. And then with my father almost dying from cancer, and it's just art has always been that one thing that has kept me strong and so I didn't falter or go back to the hard drugs the alcohol what I used to do yeah so you got in it in a bad way yeah yeah so this is what keeps me sane okay <laughs> <laughs> did you hit a rock bottom or could you see rock multiple bottom? multiple rock bottoms really I was living on rock bottom for quite some time there was okay. quite a few years where I, that was my happy place was rock bottom okay so then it was you know Oh man, I can't really accomplish anything in life being down here. It was just like a light switch clicked and I was like, you know, I need to do something with my life. And art was what helped me get back. Okay. And that moment, that switch when it turned on, was there something you were working on or something you wanted to create to, to bring you out of that? I think I just wanted to create a better life for myself. Okay. That's really, I just wanted to, you know, start building this magical world around me, I guess, to get out of this area that I was in, this negative spot that I was in, and it worked. What put you in the negative spot, though? It was just, you know, bullying, childhood, learning disabilities, like a bunch of different things just kind of accumulated. I always felt like I had a tough childhood, okay. whereas I was given the best childhood ever in the <laughs> world, but for some reason I had those struggles. And art was the one thing that has kept me from falling into those struggles. 
Are you originally from Lancaster? I'm originally from Washington State. Oh, wow. What brought you out here then? My family. Okay. So my, do my parents are doctors. Okay. So they're now local. Okay. So they moved out here and yeah. you came along. How old were you then? Young. Pretty yeah. young. Yeah, very young because we lived like it's from Washington, to Louisiana, to Virginia, to here. Then I got shipped up to school in Connecticut for learning disabilities. So, and then that also had a big, you know, with the drugs and everything. I was like, oh, well, my parents don't love me. They shipped me off. Oh, uh, okay. But that wasn't the case. Yeah. But as a, you know, teen who doesn't know what's going on, that's how I took it. If you don't mind, and if this isn't prying too much, but what learning disabilities? You know, until this day, I don't even think they really know exactly. I feel like I've been thrown, had so many diagnoses thrown on me that I'm like, well, what am I now? I mean, I know I'm very ADHD, that is for sure. I cannot sit still. Okay. Concentration, very, 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 very problematic for me. Okay. School was just, I mean, it was just always really boring for me. I was always interested in learning what a couple grades ahead were learning. Okay. So it was, you know, can't really explain it. No, I understand that like, there's a creative mind that needs to be fed a different way. Mm -hmm. So when you went into college, did you find an outlet there? Did you find a space that you could feel comfortable? I did. It actually took me quite a few years to go back to college. I didn't graduate or even start college until I was like 25. I was, I was just partying and doing my own thing. <laughs> okay, yeah. And then it was everyone really pushed me. They're like, you should go back to school. You should do art. So I started doing these adult education classes in the evening, see if I liked it. And I was like, oh, wow, I really like this. I want to keep doing this. And then next year I was enrolled and back in college. So something in your art education that you carry on, like was it a milestone? You're like, oh, I get it. I, I'm going to carry this with, the, with me for the rest of my life. There's so many little things, actually. I mean, it's really kind of weird thinking, like looking back at, all the stuff that I was taught in school and be like, oh man, this is never going to apply to anything. And now I find little things on everyday life where I'm like, oh, okay, okay. That works. That works. Yeah. I can do this. So you just have to kind of like change it around a little bit so it works for you so you can figure it out. If that makes any sense. It does. Right. Is there a, a medium that you'd like to work with the most? Yeah, really, I like to work with all mediums. I like to be able to use my hands and feel the mediums in my hand when I'm using it. Clay, I love clay, but after clay, probably metal. Okay. I don't know why, but something about metal is just when you manipulate it and after it's manipulated, I just feel a better a sense of accomplishment from the metal. It's just this really cold, hard material. And then to be able to do what I want with it, I think it's really cool. You breathe life into something. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And you use a lot of salvage materials. Is mm -hmm. there, I mean, why? I see the beauty in it. Okay. I see the beauty in the salvage material. I think the newer materials, a lot of times, are just really boring and plain. You don't have that age, that soul that's in that old material that just pops out at you. And that's what I look for. I don't want to just make some boring piece that's just plain. I like to like, oh wow, look at that. Look at that little element right there of that rust. And that's what I'm looking at. Okay. I'm looking at all those imperfections. Those imperfections are the perfections to me. Is there something that inspires you to create art? Like another artist or a person or a feeling or emotion? A lot of it's just feeling. I just, I get this overwhelming sense. I'm like, I have to do this. I have to make this. Now, growing up, my, I would say like Alexander Calder okay. would be a huge, huge, like, inspiration to me when it comes to, like, the sculpture, the big stuff. I mean, he did a little bit of everything. 
that's how I kind of like to look at myself. I mean, I do jewelry, I do painting, I do this, I do that. So that's, I guess, who I look up to. Okay. Is there something you want to do that you haven't gotten a chance to do yet? Is there a big plan or, or is there a big piece that you, that you have in the back of your head? That you I've want? got a lot of stuff in the back of my head. It's... We'll wait and see. Okay. okay. I mean, <laughs> I have a place. I mean, generally my parents' house ends up usually being the, the place where everything ends up. If I have a random idea, I'll just wait till they're out of town. Be like, oh, we'll just do this when they're out of town. They won't notice. Okay. They always do. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, I just, I have, like, I want to do some big stuff with, uh, Lately, a lot of like trees, organic shapes have been really just popping into my head, and I want to do something with that. I know it's been done. People have done lots of tree sculptures and stuff like that throughout the past 50 years, yeah. and I would like to do something outside. I'm just not quite sure what yet. What do you think it is about like drugs and alcohol that artists tend to, like, and maybe you personally, what, why, why do artists tend to lean in that direction? Like musicians are like... I think it's getting the worst feeling. It's you know, I get the same feeling from when I'm building something and making something that I would when I was getting high. It's that same those endorphins, all those little things are firing off at the same time. For some reason, unfortunately, they happen to be on the same thing for me. So it's like, well, which one do you path do you choose? The drugs or the art? Well, the art's going to get me in less trouble. So <laughs> I'll do the art and still kind of getting high at the same time. It's just different. That's so art's your new drug? Art's my new drug. Yeah, definitely is. Definitely is. What are you working on right now? About to work on a bunch of furniture for uh, Lancaster Fine Foods. Oh, Doing okay. Doing a bunch of conference tables for them, a couple other local businesses that I'm getting ready to just do random furniture for. Now, when you get a piece like commissioned like that, do you find it hard to work within a certain parameter, or do you just kind of... Most of my clients just let me do what I want to do. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. They, they don't really like to tie me down. So here's like some guidelines, but other than that, do what you want to do. It's it's going to be a better turnout in the end. Do you have any advice for aspiring artists? Keep it up even when times get tough and you feel like you're not successful. Just keep pushing because the next day something could change and you could have that commission that you've been wanting. Just being patient. Very, very patient <laughs> at times. Is there a point in your life, in your artistry, where you've felt successful and you were like, oh man, this is it. When was that? Um, after Rock Lidditz, I felt it was definitely an early success, which I feel like in a way kind of screwed me over a little bit because I, I don't feel like it was quite there yet. Okay. It's just like all of a sudden overnight, you're like, you're going to build furniture. I've never made furniture before. Perfect. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, it was definitely nerve-wracking because I was pushed into something that I was n that I'd never done before, but someone saw, and they're like, we think Mark could do this. And we think he could do it really well. And it just, I'm glad that I got that extra push because it opened up a door to me that I never thought would even be something that I would want to do. I mean, never in my life did I think I'd like to build furniture. Yeah. And now I'm like, I love building furniture. And you've actually had one of your greatest creations come just recently, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that is my best masterpiece. And right who's there. that over there? That is Houston Gray. Okay. Born? Born the 27th of October. Wow. So, so new dad. I am, new dad. So I'm definitely excited about that. I'm excited to see, you know. I know it's going to be, it's already inspired me to do a lot of different things. I got back into painting, never painted animals before, but doing a nursery, I started painting all these animals. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. 
Yeah, so are you building cribs and stuff now? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and not the Ikea. But the yes, other yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've had a lot of honey-do lists and <laughs> building lots of things. Cool. So, yeah, I'm excited about it. It's, it's going to be good. What is one thing you'd like to pass down to your son? Hopefully the creativeness. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully the, the want and that need to just manipulate things with your hands. It's, that's what's gotten me through so much. It got me into a lot of trouble in school because I was always fiddling with something when I should have been paying attention. <laughs> but I feel like I did turn out pretty well. Mm -hmm. Was there ever a time in your art career since you found out you liked art, went to school? It sounds like you got a job right out of school. Was there ever a time in your career where you were a struggling artist? Oh yeah. Once I realized that I didn't want to work for all the corporate people and to try it on my own, then I realized real quick, it's not easy. But it, I wouldn't change it for the world. I wouldn't. I pref, I get more accomplishment out of doing it for myself and working for myself than I do working for anybody else. Because I feel like I'm the boss, mm -hmm. and the artist should be the boss of their own stuff. <laughs>